With all the talks about politics and reparations, it's surprising to see not much still being done. It used to be a social media trend to find out who's woke or not. Then it turned into who mostly cared about the less fortunate. At the end of the day, it's always just who can talk the loudest and never do anything. Especially with Joe Biden taking Kyle Rittenhouse's side on the last trial, it's clear to see what's really going on. The two paintings I picked highlight the struggles African Americans have to go through in this country. The first painting I'm talking about is Untitled Policeman by Kenny James Marshall in 2015. And the picture depicts a black man in a cop uniform. It seems cold and late considering the cop is wearing a long sleeve and a vest jacket and he looks like he's been on the clock all day with how tired his eyes look. He sits on the hood of the cop car just watching over the city making sure there's no chaos occurring. Kevin Reed, a black former veteran from MoMA says, he's in his uniform, he's doing his job, but they don't see that this man is probably just working to feed his family. Which I have to agree with. This man in the painting is not in the best spot right now. He's conflicted, maybe he hates it, maybe he doesn't care, but the point is he's in a very ironic position. His position just got significantly more dangerous because of his skin color which is ironic because now he's on the side of the ones that are killing his kind i'm not african-american nor can i say i have been discriminated against but i can just imagine what goes on in this man's mind in terms of composition i think the color matches very well with the costume that he has to give an ominous setting suggesting that it can turn into a riot anytime the lines forming his body and his posture suggest that he's chilling, but he's still ready for something. He's not completely attentive, but if anything was to happen, he is prepared like a policeman should. I also get the feeling that he has thoughts of being a traitor, as this may seem like he betrayed his own skin. But there's nothing he can do because life isn't as black and white, and so he has to keep a job. In terms of space, I like how the back is dark and has street lights. It suggests that the block he is watching over is about to go to bed and the policeman can finally take off his uniform. And after a long day of being bashed for being a black cop, you can see with his worn out, fatigued facial expressions that he wants, all, all he wants to do is get through the day with no madness, no chaos, right? And it's crazy how a painting can feel so real. I've seen a fair share of black cops and considering the tension between the two, I wonder how someone from both communities must feel. Kenny James Marshall is, a, is an American artist and professor known for his paintings of black figures. He is 66 and was 60 when this painting was completed. According to the Museum of Contemporary Art, First, as a young artist, he decided to paint only black figures. He was unequivocal in his pursuit of black beauty. Calvin Tompkins, also from The New Yorker, states, He won awards, residencies, and grants, including the MacArthur Fellowship in 1997. But in the contemporary art world, which started to look more closely at black artists in the 90s, Marshall was an outlier and happy to be one. So although his artwork has only started getting recognition now, James has always had a passion for drawing black culture. The next painting I have is panel 22 of Jacob Lawrence's migration series. Another of the social causes of the migrants leaving was that at times they did not feel safe or it was not the best thing to be found on, streets, on the streets late at night. They were arrested on the slightest provocation. And that's what it was titled. This painting depicts three black men in suits which are handcuffed together. The vertical lines of the bars of the cell they're in bring attention to them, and so do the man on the far right's pants. The colors in the painting are pretty bland because maybe he wants us to perceive a jail cell or a life as a black man as not as colorful. You know, when you're stopped by police almost every time you go out, 
Uh, it's not so much rainbows and sunshines, right? Jacob Lawrence makes the sky a blurry fog on purpose, I think. Just, just like how he colored the inside of the cell. It's almost like the painting begs to be gray, in a sense. Because it, it just wants it to be a, not a boring painting, but like there's nothing special here. This is just uh, the daily the daily black man's lifestyle being cuffed in a, in a cell for doing nothing. Um, according to Brian Stevenson, a human rights lawyer, he says the most amazing thing about J James Lawrence's work is, it's about black people depicted in full color with their full humanity on display their meditation their labor their joy their anger their grief jacob lawrence proves that he is a great storyteller by painting the dynamic between african americans and the rest of america especially after world war ii in terms of in terms of space in the painting there's not much he does this on purpose to show that it's not a cozy room. The painting is also divided in three sections with each man in the picture filling out these sections. These three must all have different stories and how they got there. But at the end of the day, to the police, they're, they're just cattle to be handcuffed. And, that, and that's, what, that's what I thought instantly when I saw this picture. They're just handcuffed together. Um... I think that these works are culturally significant because there are huge waves of motivation, like politically and activism, right? And fixing these systems that hurt our own people, whether that may be, you know, mass incarceration, whatever it is. Although this is great, there's not much we do to follow through. Um, and if we do, like it takes a very long time. I mean, ever since Joe Biden was elected, we've gotten comfortable. Like, let's be honest, we've gotten comfortable. It's not the same uh, aggression that we used to have against the government about this kind of stuff. It's horrible seeing this because for us, it's a success story. Like, yay, we got Trump out of office. But for African Americans, it's a never-ending nightmare. Like, I'm not saying we have not made advances to try and improve the systems that continuously put minorities down. But to say that we are going at a slow pace is an understatement. It's easy to get comfortable when you don't see their realities and these paintings show it perfectly. Thank you.